Welcome to Intersectional Feminist Procedural Content Generation. And a quick overview of what we mean by that is looking at work that investigates and challenges uh, the role of gender and how gender intersects other um, sort of political aspects, so race and uh, sexuality and class, um, and how that uh, is sort of integrated into procedural systems. This is something that I think about a lot in my own work um, in making social simulation games um, about, so I'm very interested in making the underlying uh, social model explicit to the player. Um, and one of the ways of doing that is through um, offering like a character creation tool. Um, and one of the things to think about in terms of character creation tools is uh, really challenging the sort of default assumptions of how characters are sort of defined um, and letting the player investigate uh, how you're redefining them. So for example, um, in, uh, in my latest game of Invasion Tales, um, uh, there are sort of sliders to show personality attributes, um, and, but there's also sort of randomized skin tone. There are two starting characters um, who uh, have sort of gender neutral names by default. Uh, so you can sort of encode them as male, male or female, but you can also generate, uh, you can just randomize um, the characters and get a whole bunch of looks which are uh, very much sort of, uh, yeah, like gender non-conforming. Um, I thought about it a lot in Red Shirt as well. So Red Shirt had a gender slider uh, so representing gender as a, as a spectrum rather than as a binary, which isn't the perfect solution, but I was really interested in challenging the sort of default uh, way. So gender as a float rather than as an inter or ball. Uh, and also um, sort of, you know, pansexuality is like default uh, rather than uh, being straight. Even something like the, uh, the, the texture, the palette that you're using uh, to generate random skin tones is such a political choice and it's something that I think think about a lot in my games. One previous example of something that explores intersectional feminism and a whole other range of issues of diversity is Parable of the Polygons, which I made with Nikki Case. And in this game, it was using a system to understand some of these issues. Okay, so whenever someone writes an algorithm, they're thinking about the, 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 the thing that they want to represent and they, they, they make up a model of that, but that make, that the model that they make, they make up always sort of contains assumptions that, will, uh, that are affected by whoever is making the model, right? So uh, when you make a generator, you can use that to explore uh, the definition of what you're creating. So when you're, you make something and then you see what happens and then you think about whether or not that uh, works with your internal representation of, of the thing that you're trying to represent and then you maybe rewrite the algorithm if that's not what you want. If the person who's writing the algorithm has bias, they can um, use the algorithm to sort of get out of their own bias. So for example, in my game Migakure, I was thinking of uh, writing the story uh, and then maybe flipping uh, a coin uh, for the gender of each character so that my own internal maybe bias would not be affected, would not affect the story that I'm writing. When we create a uh, PCG um, or any type of, sort of computer art, um, there's this sort of distancing that happens. Like we can say that we're, uh, you know, it's not us uh, who is saying a particular thing, it's actually the computer who is speaking for us. This kind of idea of PCG is sort of suppression of authorial presence. So I think it's really healthy to think about how we can subvert that and how um, that's also sort of got links to this idea of sort of traditional, traditional masculinity and how that's all about emotional distancing as well. We've looked at the implicit intersectional feminist aspects of PCG, but we can do it on purpose. And so I decided to make boobscape.io, which you can go to. It's a self-expression of my high school experience of not having control over the landscape around me and growing up. Uh, and the idea is that the procedural aspect is important because you don't get to choose the ones you get. So, uh, I started uh, work on a sort of so, uh, on using like a social sim as explicit personal expression as well. It's really about using generated agents and their behavior in order to tell um, what is for me a very deeply personal narrative. And one of the pieces that I've been working on is uh, related to my interest in how the, the kinds of computational models that are available to us already uh, inform the kinds of gender identity 
that we can express uh, through software. Maybe some of the things that we didn't quite touch on as much in this talk uh, is sort of the notion of interchangeability with people and uh, with generated characters, you know, when is it appropriate to be sort of like colorblind in a sense mm -hmm. um, versus when do you want to sort of explicitly uh, treat issues of race and gender and sexuality. If we're thinking about using PCG to tell explicit personal narratives, how do we open it up and make sure all kinds of stories are being told? Yeah. So I think if someone were to make a tool, uh, or make tools to make PCG more accessible, like to make PCG, um, that would be a feminist act, in fact. Yeah. So. And, and we sort of threw around this phrase of like, what is the twine of PCG? And also, I think to wrap up, uh, one of the things we said, the very one of the first things we said was, uh, doing PCG while female uh, <laughs> is kind of an inherently feminist act as yeah. well. So, um, yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thanks. Bye, everyone.